Hey, my tank is really dirty and I've heard there's fish that can clean it for me. What are those? We see that in our comment section all the time. It's all over Facebook and Instagram too. Today we're gonna answer that question, but let me just tell you up front, some of you aren't gonna like our answers. If you're sitting there looking at an aquarium that's all brown and there's hair algae so long that it's flowing in the wind and your water looks like iced tea, you're not gonna be getting the answer that you're looking for. So let's address the elephant in the room first. You need to understand that cleanup crews are to keep an aquarium clean, not to clean up that mess that's already there. If your aquarium looks like a septic tank, there is no fish that you're gonna be able to put in there that's gonna make it sparkling clean. So you need to get that out of your head. So stop being lazy, get off your ass and clean your aquarium. And once it's clean, these fish we're gonna talk about are gonna help you keep it that way. And notice I said help. You still have to do some work. I gotta tell you, over the last couple of years, I have become completely obsessed over shrimp. I just kind of understand now why they're so popular. Shrimp are one of the most perfect aquarium inhabitants. They are so super cute. They're like this little and they're so cute. And they'll go all over the tank and they just wanna eat and clean up. In my experience, shrimp aren't the type of little critters that like an aquarium that's super clean. So the cool thing is, if you have a tank that is lived in, they're gonna love it. The biggest thing to keep in mind with shrimp is their size. These little guys or gals, they're super tiny and fish will just gobble them up if they have the chance. It doesn't matter if these fish are labeled peaceful community fish, if the shrimp is small enough and the fish is big enough, they're gonna gobble them up. That's just life. Another thing to keep in mind is that shrimp, when they breed, the babies are like really super tiny. They're not as small as brine shrimp, but they're pretty small. And you know what fish like to do with brine shrimp? Another thing I want you to keep in mind when you're choosing shrimp is that there are different kinds of shrimp. Some are more easier to keep and some are a little bit more harder. So make sure you do your research so you know which ones you're gonna get for your aquarium. If you want my personal opinion on the easiest shrimp to keep, I would go with a mono shrimp or the cherry red shrimp. They're, I find, to be the easiest ones to keep, at least for me. And a mono shrimp, they get, they're a little bit bigger than the cherry shrimp. So I'd say they're probably hardier. And don't forget, shrimp always, always, always like to eat. And it's good to give them a little something extra. Don't expect them to only eat what's in your aquarium. I like to feed mine the extreme aquatic uh, shrimpy. It's amazing. They love it. And yours will too. I'm going to put these next two fish together because, well, this is my channel and I do what I want. Autosynclus and Siamese algae eaters are two very different fish, even though they kind of look similar when they're small. But once they grow up, no. Autos are gonna max out at about one and a half to two inches, where Siamese algae eaters, they're gonna get way bigger than that. I've seen them like four to five inches. And I was told five inches is above average. Both of these fish have one mission and one mission only and that is to devour algae in your tank. And boy, let me tell you, they do a good job of it. But you need to understand something, and this applies to all fish keeping. If you have an aquarium that's all full of green algae and diatom algae, or a worst case scenario, blackbeard algae, don't throw in a couple of autos and think, there you go, that'll fix it, because it won't. And just because you have any of the fish we're talking about today doesn't mean you're never gonna see algae again. Algae is part of the deal in an aquarium, and it's one of those things that I personally believe is the sign of a healthy aquarium. So if you think you're gonna watch this video, throw a couple fish in, and it's gonna solve all your problems, I'm really sorry to disappoint you. Just a reminder, have you seen the new Tank Talk podcast? It's out there, it's on Spotify, it's on Apple, 
things if you like Apple, but it's there and you should definitely check it out. Snails in an aquarium is something that people are gonna react to one of two ways. One is, oh my God, they're so cute. I love them so much. And the other is, oh my God, how am I gonna get rid of these things? They are taking over my tank. But no matter how you feel about them, they are a great cleanup crew. These are another thing I've become completely obsessed over and I've even started breeding them. Some of you are probably thinking, oh my gosh, you are seriously breeding these things on purpose. I'm doing everything I can to get rid of them. Ugh. Well, yes, I do breed them on purpose because I really like them and I think they're really super cute. And I've got good water and they just kind of breed anyway. Snails never stop going through the tank and slurping up everything. If it's there, they're going to get to it eventually. It might take a little time, but they will. Most community fish aren't going to care about the snails, so they'll be okay. Unless you have something like a monster fish, like an Oscar or, you know, something that wants to eat snails, like a puffer fish, um, you should be okay. Snails aren't gonna clean everything up in your tank, but they'll definitely do a pretty good job. And you know what? They're really nice to look at and they give you something to see besides a fish in there. And there's a lot of different snails to choose from. And if you wanna buy some snails, you can buy some of mine. I'll put the link in the description and you can go get some. But don't forget your cat's aquatics food because they absolutely love this. And if you want to know the trick to catching snails, you stick a piece of this in there, they'll get on top of it, they'll be right there, and you can just snatch it up. You can put a bunch in there and get a bunch of snails and snatch them up too. Okay, here's where I'm gonna divide the audience. Half of you are gonna be like, yeah, you tell them, John. And the other half? Huh? How dare you? I am unsubscribing. If you keep a common placostomus that you bought from PetSmart that was only two inches long in anything smaller than a 125 gallon tank, you're doing this wrong. There you go. I said it to your face. We did a video a few years ago about the top 10 fish that should no longer be in this hobby and common plecos were on the top of the list. This is one of the most universally mistreated fish in the entire hobby, period. Hey, we should redo that video. I got a few I could add to the list. The reason these fish are so popular is because people believe that they're gonna do your job for you. Not only do they not do that, but they also get massive. I've said this a million times, but I'm gonna say it again. I used to work a job where I would go into eight to 10 people's houses per day, and you have no idea how many houses I would go into that would have a 20 gallon aquarium with a common pleco in it and an Oscar. But with all that said, I will tell you this, I'll let you in on a little secret. If these catfish are kept properly, which means a 125 gallon tank or larger, they are amazing at cleaning up diatom algae. If you've never heard the name diatom algae before, this is that thick, dark, brown algae that grows all over the surfaces, usually when you first start an aquarium. Common plecos eat that up like it's candy. The scenario we've talked about multiple times in this video, if your aquarium looks like a septic tank, common plecos aren't gonna do anything for you. But if it's diatom algae that you're battling, oh boy, they'll clean it up for you real quick as long as it's 125 gallons or larger. And please don't argue with me. I don't care if your sweet old grandma kept a common pleco in a 29 gallon tank for 10 years. Listen, that aquarium is 30 by 12 and you're putting a fish in there that's capable of getting 24 inches long. I know your grandma was sweet, mine was too, but she didn't know anything about fish. Corey 
Mary Doers are cute little arrowheads that wander around the bottom of your tank in the substrate and they just sift through everything looking for food. They're not going to scrape algae off of glass or eat algae off of rocks or anything like that, but they're really good at going through the bottom of the tank and eating up all the little nuggets and everything else left behind from your fish. Some things that fish keepers don't think about is that, you know, stuff goes behind rocks and decorations and you might not know it's there, but if you have a little corridor in there, or should I say five or six or more, they're gonna get back there, they're gonna eat it up, and that's where they shine. They're all over the place and because they're so small, they can get into cracks and crevices and they can get all that stuff that you forgot about. And you know what? You do still have to clean up your mess though. They're not gonna do everything for you. So don't forget that. Another thing to keep in mind is that corridors, they don't always have everything they need because of stuff left, you know, from the fish not eating it or whatnot. You do still have to feed your corridors. Throw a kelp wafer down there or an algae wafer here and there. Give them something to nibble on too. Do a little research if you're keeping corridors and make sure you feed them. Don't just depend on them to eat the stuff. Here we are folks, the part of the video that so many of you have been waiting for. And I know that you've been waiting for it because I see it all the time in the comments section. And I've even had it emailed to me. What's the best fish for eating all of the other fish's poop? I mean, what could be a better scenario? You have a tank full of fish, you're feeding them, they're pooping, and then you have another fish traveling around behind them eating up all that poop. It's every fish keeper's dream, right? You never have to do anything. Well, I finally found the answer after 30 years of fish keeping. This fish is a gift to the whole hobby of fish keeping. Because let's face it, no one wants to pick up poop. It's gross and you don't have to with this fish because it does it for you. It stays super small, so you can put it in a five gallon aquarium with a beta and it'll just swim around and eat up all of the betas poop. Or you can even put it in a giant tank with monster predators in it because this fish is so fast that big monsters can never catch it. I seriously don't understand why more fish keepers aren't talking about this fish. It is a miracle for the aquarium hobby. Seriously, are you ready? because you're not gonna believe this. The best fish for eating all the poop in your aquarium is a